Thank God you have come around. How, how did I get here? It was an accident. You were rushed here yesterday. But thank God you are okay now. Thank God. Ah, oh, thank God. My dear, thank God you are alive. Get, Take it easy. Get your eyes off me. Take it easy. You witch. Uh, uh, Give me the dead! You dead man! Make it back, man. Give it to me. Give me the dead. Come here. Get back. Doctor, please get this woman out of here. Or else I'll kill her. Take it easy. Take it easy. Please, madam, you have to excuse us, please. He has not fully recovered. Please, you have to excuse us. Doctor, I'm okay. Look, I... easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Take it easy. Please, madam, please. Please. Doctor, I know. Well, you know that is not possible. He's my husband, I know and I'm supposed husband. to be here. I know it's your husband, but for now, please, please, excuse us. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Let us pray, let us pray. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, our mighty God, I just want to thank you for your daughter, unto whom you have given this place. Your word says, wherever the soul of our peace and friends will give us the world and the heritage. You have given this place to your daughter, I ask that Father, you will establish her upon this place. In the name of Jesus. Amen. She has complained that the says there is very low. Therefore, Lord, by the reasons of the anointing upon my head, I ask that Lord Jesus will cause says here to greatly increase in the name of Jesus. Amen. Christ. Let there be testimonies following in the name of Jesus. Amen. I didn't mean to hurt you. It was a mistake. I'm sorry. Mm. It was a mistake. I know. That's what you would have claimed if I had passed out finally. Anyway, I've told you what I want. What? Pack your things from the bedroom and move into the guest room. Simple. You mean I should move into that room with Mama? Uh huh. Is there any big deal in that? No, I can't do that. Never. You must do whatever it tells you to do. Or else you pack your things and move out. Mama, this is unfair. What have I done to deserve this kind of treatment from you? You pretend that you do not know what you have done, eh? You pretend. I will not open my eyes wide and allow you to kill my only son. You witch! Mama, you two call me a witch. God knows I am not a witch. It was just a mistake. And I didn't mean to hurt him. It will almost choke life out of me. Eh, mistake. Mistake that you pushed him and broke his head. You could have allowed him to choke life out of you than to send him to an untimely grave. Mama, Remember you have married daughters, who? Mm. Thank you for reminding her. Now, just get away from here now. Don't get on my nerves today, you. Get away from here. You 
have not given me this car, but you have given this car to the work of God. And that God bless you. Let me pray. Father, in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you for your daughter. Thank you for what you are using her for in the work of the kingdom. And so, Lord, my God, as she has done this, you will bless her in multiple fold in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. As we are struggling to help to enlarge the coast of the kingdom, the Lord God himself will be your own support and will enlarge your coast as well in the name of Jesus Christ. I declare, Sister Rose, it is well with you. It is well with your body, it is well with your soul, and it is well with your spirit in the name of Jesus. Thank you. My dear, the Lord is good. Yes, I know it all the time. What's going on here? But my dear, you never told me you were going out to buy a car. Yeah, I didn't plan to go and buy a car. It was just a gift from one of our members in the church that I went to pray with. Hey, the Lord is good. And that means I will have a car to myself. <laughs> you can say that again. You can have that to yourself, at least. There will be no more struggling over cars in this house anymore. And you are now free to go out anytime you like. Yeah. Who among our members has given all this? Well, who else, of course, other than our usual benefactor? Uh -huh. Sister Rose, of course. Sister Rose again? Yes. Yes. The Lord has really used that sister to bless the work of God in our hands and the work of the ministry. And I'm seriously thinking of uh, promoting her from the post of a deaconess to an elder and make her a member of the executive council, at least to compensate her for her generosity. My dear, I don't think that's the next thing to be done now. But when, are the, when has the church position turns to appreciation, reward, or compensation, my dear, you have to be very careful and watchful of that sister. We will mentor you my dear. You know it now, you know. know it. I know it so well. We're going to watch this. Now you know what you've got to sit down. Can you come up to you? 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 Can you Good evening, Ma. Is this the lady you told me about? Yes, this is Jane. Ah. My babe. Ah. Welcome, my son. Ah. I just walked back. It's good to see you, Ma. Oh, you're welcome, Jerry. Welcome. Ah. Welcome. My girl, you're back. How was your day? Fine, thank you. Welcome. Ah. Jane, please, feel free, eh? Okay, sir. Relax. I'll be with you in a minute. That's all, eh? Yes, ma'am. Yeah, you have, yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Nobody. I said nobody can monopolize my son and be the sole owner 
After all, I didn't monopolize the father. Hmm. Mama. Don't mama me. Just go to that kitchen and prepare something for our guest. Or oh, do you expect me to do that for you? Before you go and do that, come and pack your things from the bedroom because my guest will be staying with us for this weekend. It is not possible. I am not going to leave this house. This is my husband's house. I am not going anywhere. Mm. <laughs> we shall see. Nothing bad has happened to him. Help me, God. Help me, God. How do I do? Okay. Let me call Pastor Frank. I don't know whether I see with him. Hello, sir. Sir, is my husband still with you? He has not come back home. Oh yes, I've tried him, but I couldn't reach him. Okay, sir. I'll be respecting. Thank you, sir. Oh! Ah, oh, God! <laughs> what are you doing? Mama, how? After all, I'm not praying aloud. Whether you are praying aloud or not, or not, it's not the issue. The issue is that you are disturbing me. Get out of this place. Eh? Mama, where do you want me to go? To the city home, of course. I'll make sure you do not disturb my son and his guest. Mama, that is not possible. Your son cannot push me out of the room, eh? and you to push me out of here. It is not possible. Never. We shall see now. We shall see. We shall see. I don't know, I don't know. The surprising thing is that it's just a few months ago that this sister joined this church. And now she's a member of the EC simply because she got a car for the pastor. It's like it's money that determines who become who in this church? Yes, it's morning. Morning. It's no longer your faithfulness to the will and the word of God. This is, oh God. Since position and appointment in the church is now based on how you can contribute and donate in the church. I, JJ, I will do whatever, I mean whatever I can to become one of the deconates. Is it by force? Oh. It is by force. I mean it's by force, by fire, by thunder and lightning. Uh -uh. Then what would that fetch you? Oh, <laughs> let me tell you, Chris, that will fetch me honor. It will fetch me prestige. It will fetch me respect. Above all, I will move us, shake us, and decision makers in the church. 
I beg you. I beg you. Well, let's go, let's go. I'm going to do it. Okay, let's go. Hey baby, how are you? I'm fine, thank you. I'm okay. What's the matter? Oh, let me pass very well. I boarded a bag to this place and when I was about to pay, my bag was snatched from me. Oh, sorry. I hope you don't have too much money inside the bag. I have my handsets, then I have my school fees, then I was asked to give my granny some money. Well, if you don't mind. Uh, maybe you can follow me. Let me see if we can get where I can use my ATM to get you some money. Eh? Huh? Okay. Let's go. very caring and loving and he always keeps to his promises until his mother moved in with us yeah. pastor i am fed up i'm fed up with his mother's problems and his incessant beating he has turned me to a punching bag while his mother has virtually taken over the house mm, my sister we still need to continue to pray and believe God to change him. Pastor, the more I pray, the worse it becomes. Mm. I doubt it if it will ever change. Uh, uh, uh. There's no one that cannot change, provided God is involved. The other day I prepared his favorite meal, as you cancelled me. But...
all eat the soup prepared by this useless woman. Witch. Just wait for me to prepare your delicious food. You think you can be with my son with this food? You cannot. Ten of you can never. Since I born this boy, I've been feeling it right from my belly. Even you and Intruder cannot come and separate us. You can never see Intruder that will go away. Mama, this is my house and Adiolu is my husband. It is you that will go back to your husband's house. Leave us alone. Go! 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 It is you that will go. It is you that will go. Mommy. Well, that's absolutely right. I'll wait for my mom. You can eat your own food. You can eat your food. Both mother and son have been making life unbearable for me. That's always like. I'm married to a beast. Sister Bolo, don't call your husband a beast. Just keep doing your marital duties. And let's trust God that he will change. Always remember 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 1 and 2, that says that likewise ye wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they may see your conversation coupled with fear, and be warned by your godly lifestyle. So please, the Lord will bless you. Okay, sir. Let's pray. The Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. And strengthen you. Amen. And give you the grace. The Lord will change that your husband Amen. and change your home and make him a real man Amen. that will keep his promises. Brethren, today, we are going to look at the topic, the real man today, in this our summit. And uh, first of all, I would like to show you some clips of who a real man is not before we look at the qualities of a real man. Number one, it is not the ability to beat your wife. Let me show you the clip. Sound beating to prove to her that I am a real man and not one of these men women can mess with. You stupid! You stupid! My God, was that you? Did you marry me to turn me to a party man? Give me up! Well, beating your wife doesn't make you a real man. Rather, it reveals the beast in you. Why battery only shows that you are still a man and you need a lot of growing up to do. The true proof of your manhood is not dominating and battering your wife. Rather, it's stooping low to use your strength to underguide, to help and to assist her. Why battery is one of the reasons why many men die faster nowadays than women because those women they are battering usually place a curse on them which often leads to the untimely death. Now number two point is that being a real man is not the ability to father many children. Let me show you another clip. Very expensive. What are you people doing here? I'm here for my daughter's coffee. You, Uncle? I've come to collect money for my baby food. Hello? I'm here for my food allowance. See you. You should be thanking God that you are even bearing my name. 
I've been telling you. How long are we going to continue with this? I, I'm tired. Eh? Do you want to kill me? Uh, uh, Bola, see me on Wednesday. You on Tuesday. Maybe you on Saturday. We shall see.
The man says, my father did not teach me how to live. My father simply lived and I followed him to live. Because our children will follow our example. So a real man is a man that doesn't joke with his family. Number four, a real man is a man of integrity and godly character. For you to say you are a real man, you must have integrity. And what is integrity? It comes from the word integra. Integrity, that is bonding. Your words and your actions agree together. So a real man will be somebody that keeps his word, make promises and keep those promises. A real man keeps his promise to his father, to, to, to himself, promise to live godly and righteously. A real man keeps his promise to his wife, the promise of I do. I will love you. I will care for you. A real man keep that promise under whatever circumstance. A real man keep his promise to his children that I will be a good father. I will care for you. I will protect for I me. Mean, I will provide for you. A real man keep his promises. A real man to his children. A real man keep his promise to his church. He's faithful to his church. He partake in the progress and the advancement of the church. A real man doesn't cause crisis in church. He doesn't join people to do commotion. He doesn't join people to plan to be in church. He doesn't join people to break away churches. But a real man stay true to God and to his pastor and to his church. A real man keep his promises to society. Because society depends on real men to function properly. A real, and so a real man is a man of integrity and godly character. Somebody we can look up to. Somebody that will not abuse his positions and privileges in the church or wherever he found himself. And finally for today, a real man is broad-minded and mature. Ability to do things in the right way. A real man is not moved or ruled or led by his emotions and his feelings. A real man acts in a mature way. What is my definition of maturity? Ability to do what is right, irrespective of how we feel. Our family needs a real man. Our churches need a real man. Our country needs a real man. It's when we are fulfilling these qualities, and each of us are growing as real men that we can change our nation, change our churches, change our society, and change our family for good. My prayer, you will not fail God. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Reverend, thank you very much for the seminar. I hope you have not forgotten that you're coming to our place. Not at all, not at all. I will surely make it by God's grace. Just be praying for me. The men in the church will pray for you. Amen. Thank you very much. My regards to all of you. You're welcome, sir. All right, sir. Sir, I want to say I'm very, very grateful for the message today. In fact, the men in this generation, you are a blessing to them. Yeah. And I just pray that the Lord will continually increase your anointing to be blessings to this generation the more. Amen. Thank you very much. Amen. Oh, bro, JJ. Yeah, sir. Ah, bro, JJ. This is Bra JJ. Oh, sorry, Deacon JJ, one of the newly appointed deacons in the church. He is also a blessing to the ministry and to the church in general. Yeah, Deacon, what is it? Nothing, sir. It's just that the message of today really touched me, sir. And I've come to the man of God to request for his complimentary cancer. Oh, there's no problem. I, I have it here. Yeah. This is it. Uh, Thank you, sir. Oh, all right. No blessings. Bless you, brother. Sir, I've come to see you, sir. Because I have some confessions to make, sir. Confession? Yes, sir. Okay, I, I am not qualified and worthy to be called a deacon. Mm -hmm. 
since I noticed that only those that donate and contribute to the church that our pastor normally appoints to the post of deaconate, I decided to look for money by all means by engaging in fraudulent practices in my working place. That's amazing. Apart from all my numerous robbery escapades, mm. I also masterminded the robbery that took place in our church a few weeks back, sir. That's amazing. All this I was doing in order to meet the various financial needs of my numerous gay friends and to appear big and be relevant in the church, sir. <laughs> Please, sir, I need a serious prayer because I still drink alcohol and I'm deep in adultery. In short, I'm a complete hypocrite. Mm. What a pity. You have not behaved as a real man at all. Because a real man is a promise keeper. But in your case, number one, you have broken your promise of I do to your wife by engaging in adultery. Number two, you have broken your promise of sincerity to your employer by engaging in fraudulent practices. And number three, you have broken your promise of loyalty to the church because you rob the offering and you collect tithes. And number four, which is the most important, you have broken your promise of faithfulness to the Lord by your ungodliness and a sinful lifestyle. Unless you sincerely and genuinely repent, you might be inviting the wrath and the hammer of God's judgment over your life. You know, this is what many males who call themselves men are doing in the church in order to show off. But you, you need to really turn to God now. Mm, I think I should give you something. This is a book I wrote for men, and I want to give this book to you, and you promise me that you go and read it.